Assalamualaikum second year This is Saima Malik from Biology Department Army Public School and College Fort Road Rawalpindi My dear students this is the second lecture of first week that is from the chapter respiration and the pages included in this lesson are page number 9 to page number 12 I hope you have gone through the first lecture and has no problem in that these are the pages from which we have taken the uh, this lesson and the starting topic of this uh, lecture is the mechanism of breathing that is starting from here i hope all of you have books okay let's start first of all breathing do you know what is breathing in your previous classes you have studied many times breathing respiration as and as in the first lecture i have told you that in the your lower classes the students were told that breathing is the synonymous term or breathing is same as that of respiration that is just taking in air and giving out carbon dioxide but now in uh, this class or at higher levels you will come to know that breathing and respiration are not the synonymous terms because it is respiration is a combination of both the mechanical process as well as the chemical process it is not just the transport of oxygen towards the inner side of the body and not just the transport of carbon dioxide from out of the body it is also a very complete process of chemical reactions that has that is taking place inside the body okay in this le uh, lecture in this uh, topic today uh, we will go through the mechanism of breathing that how breathing actually takes place what are the structures that are involved in the breathing and uh, what changes occur uh, in those structures during the process of breathing then we'll study a small topic of uh, respiratory volumes that is um, the the structures that are involved in the respiration process how the uh, volume of air decreases or increases or what is the volume of air in those structures and in the last we'll see how breathing process can be controlled by our body by our brain or what are the control centers of the breathing okay let's start yes first of all the structures involved in breathing means expansion and contraction of lungs so these are the structures that is diaphragm abdominal muscles and intercostal muscles that are actually involved in the breathing process diaphragm is actually the partition between the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity we can say it is a large dome of skeletal muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity dome uh, in urdu we use uh, a word gumbad you um, you are well aware of the word gumbad मस्जिद का जो गुंबद होता है उसके इनर साइड पे अगर उस गुंबद की शेप देखी जाए दैट इज एक्चुअली द शेप ऑफ डोम सो फॉर डायफ्राम वी यूज द लार्ज डोम शेप्ड स्केलेटल मसल ऑफ स्केलेटल मसल्स एबडोमिनल मसल्स मीन्स द मसल्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट इन द एबडोमिनल केविटी एंड इंटर कॉस्टल मसल्स दे आर एक्चुअली प्रेजेंट इन टू सेट्स बिटवीन ईच पेयर ऑफ रिब्स and what these two sets called these are known as external intercostal muscles that are present on the outer side and internal intercostal muscles that are present on the inner side and the muscle fibers obviously these are muscles so must mm, muscle fibers must be present in them muscle fibers in both sets diagonally but in opposite direction means muscle fibers are present obviously muscle fibers make the muscle so the fibers which are present in these intercostal muscles they run diagonally in the diagonal manner but in opposite direction this is the diagram you will see later in in the the larger view of this diagram as well 
yes phases of breathing inspiration means taking the air inside the body and expiration that is taking the air out of the body this diagram is better showing breathing in and breathing out and you can see well the structures and the changes that are being taken uh, that took place actually in those structures you can see well here the chest expands in the breathing in or inspiration whereas the chest contracts during expiration breathing out is expiration and breathing is inspiration these are the ribs you can see the changed shape or position of the ribs in both the phases as well change shape of lungs as well diaphragm contraction and relaxation has been shown in the diagram as well and the shape of the diaphragm yes this is the shape of diaphragm you can well observe the shape of diaphragm in these diagrams as well okay let's start the uh, studying the uh, comparison of breathing in and breathing out or comparison uh, between the expiration and inspiration that is actually the mechanism of breathing or we can also say it as when yes you have studied almost the same points in your 10th grade as well so it will be easier for you to understand these points see in inspiration taking in of air however in expiration is removal of air out of the lungs taking in of air means inhaling of air inside the body in expiration is exhaling of air out of the lungs means out of the body inspiration is known as the active phase of breathing however expiration is known as passive phase of breathing diaphragm contracts so its dome shape flattens means its actual dome shape you have seen in the previous diagram it doesn't remain in its actual dome shape the dome shape becomes flattens however in expiration when diaphragm relaxes so it becomes more dome shape uh, students you can easily understand this uh, comparison by uh, feeling the inspiration and expiration by uh, on your own self just inspire the air deeply then expire the air deeply and then after studying these points you can well um, understand these points or you can well um, know these points by observing yourself then then the next point in inspiration is contraction of external intercostal muscles as you have uh, studied in the previous slides that in inspiration uh, sorry uh, intercostal muscles are present in two sets yes so in inspiration in external intercostal muscles contraction occurs however in expiration external intercostal muscles got relaxed the opposite occurs in the internal intercostal muscles that is in inspiration internal intercostal muscle relaxes however in expiration internal intercostal muscles becomes contract okay now the next point in inspiration rib cage move upward and forward you can feel it by putting the hand on your ribs and just inhale the air you will feel that your rib cage is moving upward and forward however when you expire the air when you exhale the air your rib cage move downwards and backwards so when the all these above uh, changes occur in your thoracic cavity space inside the thoracic cavity got increased however as a result of these events uh, in uh, during expiration phase space inside the thoracic cavity decreased 
as in inspiration thoracic cavity inner space has been increased means pressure inside the thorax and lungs is reduced and is less than atmospheric pressure at this point means space becomes more however mm, there is more area so it means uh, pressure inside the thorax and lungs is reduced and at this point this pressure is lesser than the atmospheric pressure and as in expiration space inside the thoracic cavity decreases it means pressure inside the thorax and lungs is increased and this pressure according to its volume is more than the atmospheric pressure at this point in inspiration when all the above events got occurred air from outside enters the lungs and this inflates the alveoli 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 you have studied in the previous uh, lecture that alveoli are the main uh, respiratory um, uh, surfaces so when air enters from the outside into the lungs means it inflates the alveoli however in expiration when all the above events got occurred air from inside means from uh, the lungs expelled from the lungs from the body so it deflates the alveoli means very less air um, left inside the alveoli so these are the points or you can say these are the comparative points Uh, between the inspiration and expiration and how the two phases of breathing can be compared so in this way when we compare these two uh, phases it will become easier for you to learn this uh, comparison or to learn this difference okay let's proceed yes we can say that breathing is a cyclic activity cyclic activity means changes in one structure leads to the change in this uh, uh, leads to the change in another structure like it is the movement of chest wall as well as the movement of lungs lungs got inflated and deflated chest wall move forward and backward so all the process is being taking place in a cyclic manner as well as breathing is the changes in pressure means changes in lung volumes that is amount of air the lungs can occupy lung volume means the amount of air the lungs can occupy means the amount of air that can uh, come inside the lung at one time so it depends on means lung volume depends on the depth of respiration that how deep we can respire means on the gender either the male or female age whether um the age group is of uh, child uh, children uh, the age group is of a teenager or the age group is of a middle age or the old age and respiratory diseases because respiratory diseases also affects the amount of air that we can inspire or we can respire okay then next yes respiratory volume what is respiratory volume respiratory volume or pulmonary volume is the amount of air inhaled exhaled and stored within the lungs at any given time means the total amount of air the maximum amount of air that we can inhale exhale or can um, keep uh, inside our lungs let's go into the details respiratory volume or pulmonary volume um, are actually combination of tidal volume we call it as tv inspiratory reserve volume irv expiratory reserve volume erv and residual volume that is rv now let's see what these four volumes actually are yes first of all tv or tidal volume the amount of air which we inhale normally or which we exhale normally is 500 ml 
normally means right now you are just sitting or you are just laying or you are doing nothing means at rest the amount of air we inhale is 500 ml and the amount of air we exhale is 500 ml but we can increase this volume if we apply force if we want to increase it so in this regard there are two volumes that is irv or inspiratory reserve volume and erv or expiratory reserve volume first one irv that is inspiratory reserve volume means the amount of extra air we can inspire after tv means after tidal volume so what is the tidal volume that is 500 ml that we inspire the air in normal conditions when we are at rest after inspiring that 500 ml we can inspire the extra air as well how much that air can be that can be from 2500 ml to 3000 ml means we can increase the amount of our inspired air up up to 3000 ml and what we call that increased amount we called that increased amount as inspiratory reserve volume or irv but remember after inspiring our tidal volume that is the normal volume that we can inspire same is the case with expiratory reserve volume or erv that is the amount of air we can expire after tidal volume means we normally expire uh, 500 ml after expiring that 500 ml we can expire or we can increase the expired volume from 1000 ml to 1100 ml as we are um expiring this uh, air as the you can say the extra amount other than our normal volume that's why we call it expiratory reserve volume then the last one is rv or the residual volume as the word shows residual means left air amount of left air the amount of air remains inside the body after normal expiration even after forceful expiration means whenever we expire the air either normally means uh, either we expire the tidal volume or even we expire the expiratory reserve volume some amount of air still remains inside the body that amount can be 1100 ml to 1200 ml means never a time comes when uh, if the person is alive that his or her lungs totally got uh, um, uh, you can say emptied from the air so whatever the amount of air we can expire always 1100 to 1200 ml air remains inside our body so always remember these four volumes we can uh, call the respiratory or pul pulmonary volume is a combination of these four volumes what are these tv irv erv and rv t stands for tidal volume which is 500 ml irv inspiratory reserve volume which is 2500 to 3000 ml erv means 1000 to 1100 ml means expiratory reserve volume and last one is the residual volume that is up to 1100 ml to 1200 ml i hope you have understood this topic and uh, after uh, 
reading this topic from your book it will be uh, it will become much easier for you now let's proceed yes control of breathing now that we have studied the respiration its phases all the structures that are involved in the respiration then mechanism of respiration or mechanism of breathing then we have studied the respiratory volumes now the you know, topic comes that how this breathing can be controlled by our body or how this ventilation can be controlled our, our, uh, by our body yes i have made this flow chart like uh, for your better understanding these are the three structures you can say the of brain that are controlling or that are up to some extent involved in controlling the breathing very important one that is breathing center is medulla that carry out involuntary breathing that whatever the breathing we are carrying out involuntarily um, that we are not um, conscious even uh, while we are breathing or we can say that we are not uh, even observing um, uh, or uh, we are not focusing even that we are breathing all uh, the breathing process is uh, at that time is being controlled by the medulla of the brain so there are two centers breathing uh, center mainly the breathing center is medulla and there are two further inspiratory and expiratory centers that are present inside the medulla so the ventral portion of medulla acts to increase the rate and depth of inspiration means medulla we can we, we divided for our convenience uh, to study it uh, in in a comparatively easier way that medulla is further divided into ventral portion dorsal and lateral portions so ventral portion of medulla acts to increase the rate and depth of inspiration and we call it as the inspiratory center dorsal and lateral portion of medulla inhibits inspiration and stimulates expiration means it is the expiratory center of um, me, me, Uh, breathing then cerebral cortex of brain consciously or unconsciously increase or decrease the rate of and depth of respiratory movement so uh, during our normal routines um, there are some events occur or some uh, sometimes uh, different things occur in our life that uh, consciously or unconsciously Uh, our uh, rate of breathing or rate of respiration got increased or decreased so that um, changes in breathing movement uh, are controlled by the cerebral cortex and uh, as you have studied consciously or unconsciously means cerebral cortex help the person to stop breathing even voluntary then limbic system limbic system is also a part of brain and emotions acting through it can affect the respiratory center as well means limbic system helps in controlling different types of emotions so those emotions indirectly we can say that controls or that affects the respiratory center okay there is another cycle for your understanding a person may stop breathing voluntarily occasionally people are able to hold their breath and sometimes the yeah young people like your age uh, just um, as um, just for the fun purpose um, uh, you can hold their breath like uh, just uh, to compete with one another just to see let's see how, who can hold uh, more uh, who can hold uh, uh, breath for more time always you people compete with each other so 
blood pressure declines to a level low enough that lose consciousness it um, um, though it's not good but occasionally people do it and by doing or by holding the breath blood pressure becomes low and uh, blood pressure can becomes low up to the level that even people can lose consciousness and when loss of consciousness occurs so what happens respiratory centers as we have studied in the previous slide resumes its normal function mainly the medulla in automatically controlling respiration so uh, i i have made this cycle just to give you a look that how mm, a respiratory center is actually controlling the process of respiration okay recap of our today's lesson first of all we studied mechanism of breathing which involves the inspiration and expiration then we studied respiratory volumes which includes tidal volume that is tv inspiratory reserve volume that is inspiratory reserve volume that is irv then expiratory reserve volume that is erv and residual volume that is rv then we studied the control of breathing in which the centers of brain or the parts of brain that are actually acts as the uh, centers of breathing includes medulla cerebral cortex and limbic system okay mm, yeah, that's all about the today's lesson let me give you very first thing very important thing learn the topics discussed and the exercise short questions that is 9 and 10 you can solve easily with the help of this uh, lecture and this lecture will also help you in solving your extensive questions of exercise that is 22 and 23 so that's all for today uh thank you students go through the video lecture then read the lecture uh, the topic from your books and then ask any question if you still have thank you take care stay safe stay blessed